we have shortly after the next speaker, who is a very illustrious friend of mine, Sharif Kafal Ghazali and Ghazal. He is a highly respected physician of high repute, a surgeon of distinction, but above all, he is particularly important for us because his knowledge of Syria and the present plight is of immense value. As you know, we are now in a situation in Syria, a city of learning, Damascus, a country that where Allah blessed with the shadow of, uh, of the angels is in turmoil. And I sincerely hope, as I mentioned earlier, that we see peace very shortly. And this gentleman's work in Syria is important, and we need your support. During tea break, there will be a discussion on that. Dr. Sharif, Mr. Sharif is an outstanding surgeon. In addition, his knowledge of Islamic medical history is massive. I've heard the opportunity of hearing him in Birmingham, where we invited him to Muslim Doctor Association dinner. I will not come in his way to deliver talk, talk to you, and inshallah, we'll have time to question him at the end of his lecture. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I think uh, the two uh, excellent uh, talks by uh, Prof. Gumati and uh, Dr. Gama really made, uh, is going to make life very difficult for me because two excellent uh, uh, speaks probably may be very uh, uh, little for me to, to add. Uh, I think I'm going to touch very quickly because I know we are a little bit uh, uh, late and uh, probably maybe uh, would leave any questions uh, on the break. So, Islamic medicine, <clears throat> very quickly, the history of Islamic medicine really as we know it is the knowledge of medicine which has been inherited by Muslims as we've, we've just uh, heard now. And uh, as uh, Dr. Agamis mentioned before, the, the dark age wasn't really dark because there is a quite a few shining uh, points as, we, uh, as we've seen from uh, Judy Shapur, Baghdad, Cairo, Cordoba, Toledo, and uh, when uh, the mentality of the uh, caliphs during the Umayyads and the Abbasid time, they encouraged people to uh, translate. They start by translating, and that's why Beitul Hikmah, the House of Wisdom, uh, being really quite uh, important uh, establishment that time, and all these uh, books being. Uh, translated into Arabic. The Arabic language, as uh, we've heard before, was almost the, the language of, uh, uh, of the time. And uh, we can see uh, lots of uh, uh, terminology actually uh, done in, in Arabic. And uh, again, as we heard, Hanin, Hanin ibn Ishaq, uh, uh, he was one of the main translators that time. Uh, many of the books being translated from uh, the Greek uh, from uh, Jarinos or Galen, as we, as we call it in English. Uh, we did uh, say that uh, Muslims uh, have a slightly different practice from the Greek. They, they, they didn't just only copy it. Uh, they observe, they experiment, they have uh, writing their books, they have the chapters, parts, articles, they have a different class classification. Also, they introduce pharmacy, regulating uh, uh, the uh, pharmacy industry by having the husba. The husba is quite important, and uh, we've heard that uh, uh, one of the first uh, person to take this task was a lady, uh, a shifa bint Abdullah. Uh, they introduced as well lots of surgical instruments, and uh, uh, as we heard, they, they have uh, also some critical thinking uh, about uh, 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 Galen. So it's not only just to follow blindly. Uh, 
we, we've heard that al-Baghdadi uh, talk about the anatomy of uh, the mandible, and it was one bone, one, one, one bone by, which has been described by Galen, uh, obviously, uh, in fact, described as a two by Galen, just we, we, we knew it's a, uh, this is wrong. Uh, Al-Zahrawi, he, he mentioned the treatment of uh, uh, rib fractures. Ibn Nafis, his uh, main uh, discovery about the uh, pulmonary circulation. We know Galen actually had a slightly different view, in fact, major different view. Uh, uh, Galen used to believe that the uh, blood comes uh, from one side to the other through little tiny holes. Uh, Ibn Nafis, we, we know uh, he discovered the uh, pulmonary circulation, which has been almost uh, uh, 600 years before even William Harvey uh, done this. So uh, the Muslims actually, Muslims and non-Muslim in the, in the Islamic State, they digest, they spread, they, uh, they, they made lots of advancement on medicine and as well as, as we heard probably maybe in different uh, sciences like astronomy, chemistry and uh, agriculture. So I'm very quickly going to touch a few parts in my talk. Uh, properly starting. So why the Muslims reach this, uh, this stage? How Islam really promotes science and medicine? We know that uh, uh, when uh, the Mongols actually came to Baghdad, they almost destroyed everything, and the same, unfortunately, by the uh, Spanish uh, after the uh, uh, Islamic uh, time in Andalusia. The Muslims have completely different views. Although they challenged the civilized world, but they preserved and uh, they kept everything. And this is because the teaching of, of Islam. Why, how does Islam really promote science? We know Islam stress on the, uh, on the importance, respect of teaching or, of, and learning. The first ayah, the first verse uh, uh, came uh, in the Quran actually read, Iqra, Iqra bismarabika alladhi khalaq. So the first ayah was read, and there's many other ayahs actually we can mention here. Say, uh, O Muhammad, are those who knows equal with those who don't know, so this is uh, to encourage people to go and read and search. Hadith, this is a very uh, famous uh, uh, saying of Prophet Muhammad as well, whoever seeks a way to learn, Allah will help him uh, through, the way, uh, through the way to paradise. So you'll be rewarded by this. How does Islam promote science? We know that there is no censorship in Islam on scientific research. We've heard how Muslims used to do uh, even anatomy, dissect, search, using animals in a reasonably ethical ways. And there's a freedom of science uh, uh, and scientific research, which uh, as long as it's not causing any harm uh, to uh, uh, the well-being. And uh, we've heard that uh, the, that time, the church taught that it was early just to seek natural cure from a physician when one could obtain supernatural help from a priest. And that's why uh, uh, there's a huge big difference between Muslim and non-Muslim uh, teaching. How does Islam promote medicine? Also, Islam uh, provides law to protect the human body. We know the uh, ayah in uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, and whoever saves a life, it would be as uh, uh, if he saved the life of all people, all, all human beings. This is a, a sacred life, actually. This is the, the important. Uh, uh, this is the saying of Prophet Muhammad Whoever helps a brother in difficulty, Allah will help him through his difficulty on the day of judgment. Again, there is a tolerance with other religions. Islam really gave uh, lots of lessons to this, and we can just uh, read very quickly uh, this quotation from one of the uh, uh, famous rabbi in, in New York when he said, uh, Dr. Menken, it was the Mohammedan Spain, it is a Muslim, this is what he used to call Muslim. It was the Muslim uh, that was the only land of a freedman. This is where uh, in uh, Andalus, the Jews knew nearly a thousand years. The Jews were safe under the sign of the Crescent. This is how Islam really treated the others. Also in, in Islam, uh, in, in Quran itself, we, we, can, we can see lots of, uh, I would call it, reflections on uh, uh, scientific uh, and uh, medical miracles. 
although I mean Quran itself is not a book of anatomy but uh, there is plenty of, uh, of uh, reflections purely to encourage Muslims to seek knowledge and to reinforce and strengthen the uh, faith of Muslims. Uh, how does Islam promote science? Also, uh, plenty of uh, uh, health guidance from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sayings, although some people actually put it as Tubb uh, al-Nabawi, uh, but I call it really uh, health guidance. Uh, we, can, we can see a, a very nice uh, uh, hadith, very nice saying for the importance of seeking treatment. Allah has not created any disease without also creating a cue for it. Whoever knows it, knows it. And whoever is ignorant of this is ignorant of it. So this is the uh, saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just to encourage people to go and search, look for the uh, cure, look for uh, the, 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 the uh, treatment. Uh, many, prof many, many prophet sayings as well on dieting, on uh, we know uh, alcohol is prohibited and uh, lots of uh, harms of it. Uh, the health uh, this is quite interesting uh, saying here, interesting hadith about the plague, uh, if, you, if you hear that the plague is in a place, then don't go there. But if the plague is already there, and you are there, then don't try to run away from it. This is a very important, uh, very important part of our modern medicine, the isolation. So you don't want to spread the uh, infectious disease. Psychologic support as lots of uh, hadith as well. Plenty of research done on honey, black seed, hijama, and uh, the miswak, importance of miswak. I'm going to touch very quickly now the attitude and contribution of the Islamic State. And uh, already we mentioned a few. I'm just going to add a very quick uh, few things. Just one of the examples just to show how important really uh, they look at it at uh, uh, the, even the uh, hierarchy, the Umayyad princes, uh, Khalid ibn Yazid. He left even... Uh, 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 his uh, status purely to join uh, medicine and chemistry, just to study in Alexandria. Uh, and uh, this is to show how important really to follow such a prestigious uh, uh, career. Uh, during, as we heard before as well, during the Abbasi uh, Khalifa, mainly Harun Rashid and others, uh, <coughs> the books used to be rewarded by the weight of, trans by the weight of gold, really, for uh, really encouraging people to uh, make a tribute. And uh, also, the, uh, most of the money comes, as we said before, the uh, adequate financial uh, uh, fund coming from Al-Waqf. Al-Waqf is very much like a trust coming into this uh, big uh, fund, the big hospitals, and uh, also the zakah, which is 2.5% for the income. This is quite an uh, uh, important force for funding all this hospital. Uh, very, very early uh, hostels we, we, we knew uh, during uh, uh, Al Khandaq or the Al Khandaq uh, battle, uh, Rafida uh, tent, she was almost like a field hospital to treat uh, uh, the companions of Prophet and one of his uh, uncle, Saad Nabi Waqqas, was injured in that battle and uh, she was uh, the main uh, nurse to treat him. Uh, during uh, uh, Al Walid uh, during uh, uh, the Umayyad time, uh, the Bimaristan for sick patients as well. Uh, imagine for leprosy, actually, the first one of the first hospitals being, being built for leprosy. That time, uh, it took probably maybe uh, the, I mean, after 600 years later, uh, leprosy patients being condemned and used, used to be burned to death by royal decrees in, in, in Europe. Harun Rashid, as we mentioned before, uh, he appointed Al Razi to build the first hospital, and we know how he selected uh, the hospital, which is fresh air and uh, away from the bacteria. And he appoint, appointed uh, uh, 24 physicians to, uh, to run this hospital. And uh, this is not one hospital. In fact, this is very much like 30, over 34 of these big hospitals being spread uh, all over. Al Mansouri. Uh, it's very interesting. We probably maybe went through it very quickly. 8,000 beds. Uh, just imagine when I say 8,000 beds. I mean, I work in, in Bradford. The biggest hospital next to, to Bradford is actually in St. James Hospital in Leeds. You can see here, not even 1,000 beds. And <clears throat> close to uh, here, St. Tom's Hospital, uh, not even 900, 858. 
uh, King's College Hospital, 950 beds. So 8,000 beds hospital. This is a huge big hospital run by specialized world, free admission. Uh, I mean, this is purely uh, fantastic. Physician of all faiths, you to work. There's a medical school attached to it, uh, libraries, housing for all doctors. And there's no limited time for inpatient treatment. We're not pushed by, by beds or by uh, management to hit us. And the people know who work at the NHS here, you have to achieve target, you have to get the patient discharged because another patient is waiting. No, but how would, I mean, that time, uh, patients actually being kept till the patient is fully recovered. How would you know recovered? The patient would be able to eat full chicken. So then the patient probably may be discharged home. And on discharge, the patient will be given a little bit of uh, pocket money and the clothes take as a sick allowance because patients have been off work for a while. This, this sort of mentality, actually, this hospital, not only at the Mansouri in Egypt, in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt, all over the Islamic world, as we said before, separate wards, proper record, proper record of patients. They used to have proper administration, administration system. Most and the chapels, most and chapels as well, running water. This is in uh, Al Nuri. We mentioned Al Nuri. There's only little things I'm going to add. Uh, I know where Al Nuri actually, Al Nuri Hospital, act very much in the place called Al Hariqa. Al Hariqa, it's uh, exactly where the uh, Syrian uprising, Syrian revolution started this week, two years ago. But unfortunately, uh, this is not because of the age. This is because of uh, uh, Scott missiles being hit a few weeks ago. This is in Aleppo, by the way. It's not in Damascus, but another Bimar stands. It's lots of, uh, unfortunately. So we need you to pray for this. Uh, this is again uh, uh, mentioned uh, in Egypt, uh, Al Mu'ayyad and uh, other Bimar stands. Special training. Sinan ibn Sabit uh, used to run uh, and screen all the patients, uh, all the physicians actually, 860 physicians in Baghdad. Al Razi as well used to examine the patients, as Dr. Nagami said before. Uh, people run like uh, the same FRCS type, primary and uh, uh, part one and part two, part one in, in anatomy and uh, uh, basic science and part two in a clinical. Regula regulations, fantastic uh, uh, way. Why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, big saying, Man very important, who practices medicine and is not competent, competent will be held into account. This is important aspect which, which uh, set uh, uh, concrete in, in, into the uh, uh, basic foundation of the uh, uh, assurance that it's only the people who are competent to, uh, to run it. And not only this, they will be regulating body as well and uh, drug inspectors, punishment. As I mentioned before, Shifa bin to Abdullah, al, 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 uh, uh, this is during uh, uh, Omar al-Khattab time. Uh, I mean, this is only like uh, almost 10 years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam death. Uh, so this is the way of uh, uh, Islamic practice. Al-Shifa, she's a female, she used to run al husba like a regulating body. Very quickly, because we mentioned many physicians. I'm not going to touch uh, all of them, obviously. Again, back to Al-Zahrawi. I really, I love them. I really respect him. Not because I'm a surgeon like him, because like most of you, he's a Muslim, European Muslim. He's born and died in Europe. He's, he's an example which probably maybe uh, uh, we can learn from him. He's not far from the Far East. He's not from Arab countries. He's not from Asian countries. He's from this cont continent. He's from, from Europe. He's a Muslim, European physician. He came from Al Zahra, Al Zahra near Kurtuba. Kurtuba, over 600,000 books that time. He wrote this book, Al Tasrif, Liman Ajza Al Ta'alif. This is a very fascinating book. 30 volumes, the last volume on surgery, and you can see just a little short list of what he's done uh, before, and cataract, uh, opium, using opium anesthesia, as you mentioned before, the obstetric, obstetric, uh, obstetrics and the forceps for extracting uh, dead fetus, uh, general surgery, uh, trauma, urology, all this sort of uh, uh, neurosurgery, quite important actually, chronotomy uh, technique, using holes technique uh, to uh, open the skull. And uh, one of the uh, gentlemen in Aleppo, in, 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 in Halab, in Syria, he copied the instruments now in, uh, in Aleppo. This is uh, some of the instruments. And this is Al-Zahrawi, uh, Abu Al-Qasim Al-Zahrawi. He's teaching his student uh, Al-Hijama. And this is a quite fascinating uh, manuscript in uh, Oxford. I mean, again, just look at this here. 
uh, probably anybody who can read Arabic, you still can read the same manuscript, which is thousand years old. First line, al fasl salasun fi qal al asnan, the third, the chapter thirties, in removing for removing teeth. I've just seen a poster, a nice poster this morning. Uh, I mean, uh, touching this. It's a very, very straightforward Arabic language. So Arabic, is, anybody can read Arabic, uh, even uh, for the old, uh, I mean, manuscript, another uh, manuscript of Al-Zahrawi. Uh, Al-Tasrif itself, this book being translated into uh, Latin and uh, was being uh, taught in Italy and, and, and France. This is a few translations for uh, the book and uh, written about uh, Al-Zahrawi himself. We can see in a few in English, some in German, and uh, in French, as well as in Arabic. Ibn Sina, I'm not going to add too much on Ibn Sina. Just imagine one book, Al-Qanun, the Al-Qanun fil tub Al-Qanun Kanun fil tub I mean, over a million, million words, it's in seven big volumes. As we mentioned before, he was only 21 or 22 when he wrote uh, his book. This is from his manuscript, uh, al Khanun Al-Razi again. This is Al-Hawi. I'm just going to show you. This is actually quite interesting. Stained glass window of Al-Razi. And you can see here, Kitab Al-Hawi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is obviously, the, you can see it if you visit Cambridge University Medical School. And it's still there. And he wrote a very nice book, actually. I mean, let alone the, 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 the famous book, Al-Hawi. He wrote a very nice book. Tabibu man la yahduruhu tabib. Medical guides for public when physician is not available. So they're like, a, like a book can be, can be kept at home and uh, read it. Um, this is uh, in Yale University, manuscript, manuscript for Al-Hawi. This is a few articles I already published on uh, the uh, Ishim Journal, if you can read. As uh, uh, Dr. Hussain mentioned before, this is only short list of uh, people, uh, of some of the uh, uh, physicians. And uh, Musa, ibn, uh, Musa ibn Maymun, uh, Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Rahman, Ibn Farish, they all, uh, there's some Ibn Al-Qif, Ibn Jabri, this is all uh, uh, Christian, there's some uh, Jewish, and this, uh, this is civilization, Islamic civilization as a big umbrella to take everybody to work underneath. Uh, it's very important, ladies sitting uh, on the top anyway, just to tell them, you need to feel proud, because there are lots of female physicians as well, Rafid Al-Aslami, as we mentioned before, <laughs> The nurse been uh, working in uh, Ghazwat al Khandaq, and, and not only herself, Um Atiya al Ansariya as well. She, she used to practice uh, medicine. And Zainab uh, bin Bani Aus, Zainab Bani Aus, she used to practice even I, uh, uh, and she was uh, during the Umayya time. The reason I put this because, uh, I mean, Elizabeth Blackwell, only till uh, last century she managed to get, uh, I mean, 1885, she managed to get uh, uh, her uh, qualification. Um, as an uh, American physician in 1858, even in this country, Elizabeth Anderson, she, wasn't, she was not even allowed to get into the registration book to be registered. She had to go to France and come back as a nurse to, be, to challenge and then uh, manage to get her uh, uh, registration in 1870. Eleanor Davis Colley, only in 1911, she managed to get uh, uh, her qualification. Medical ethics, I'm not going to go into this because I believe there'll be talk on medical ethics later on anyway. Ishaq ibn uh, Ali Rahawi, very nice book, Ali Tabari, and this is well, how the Muslim doctors' uh, uh, characters, I would say, the oath of uh, Muslim doctors as well, fascinating how to uh, follow this. This has been uh, uh, announced in Kuwait in 1981. Uh, little article I published before. Very quickly, recognition by non-Muslim, just two minutes, please. Uh, Michael Hart, uh, this is actually a book in the 70s, uh, he put here uh, why he chose Muhammad the first in the list, because he was the only man in the history who was superior and successful in both religious and... We can mention it very quickly as well, some very nice words that Islam was a religious of remarkable tolerance, and this... The Islam was, has been part of Europe for so long. This is, came from Prince Charles uh, in the 1993. We mentioned before uh, uh, the uh, uh, hostel owes debt to Islam. This is actually by Emily Savage Smith and uh, another few uh, books published by herself and Peter Borman. And uh, th many books being been published uh, 
on uh, Islamic medicine. We just need to read. This is part of our... Uh, this is fascinating. Even BMJ. Yeah, this is being done in 2005, how Islam changed medicine. But look at this here. In 1946, they published a nice article on Islam and medicine. This is a British Medical Journal here in this country. How Islam Innovator Changed the World. Brother, mashallah, uh, Dr. Brother Kamati already uh, mentioned, mentioned this. The, uh, this is interesting in uh, Science Museum little section on Islamic medicine. The Wellcome Trust as well, they contribute. And there's a few uh, seminars already done on this. I published a few, uh, uh, <coughs> few articles on the, this website, Brother Prof. Gamati mentioned. I have a little website if somebody would like to go, islamicmedicine.org. I don't think, uh, I think I probably maybe uh, mentioned very quickly, but quite important. Why are we talking about Islam? The history of Islam. Why do you need to know about the history? I think it's only those who remember history can make history. And this is what the really the, uh, uh, the young people need to inspire. Jazakumullah.